Hello and welcome back to Leisure Loop. I've been away for about two years working on my latest puzzle box. And for this video specifically, I will talk about the pros and cons of 3D printing versus CNC machining from a finished parts quality, manufacturability, consumables, costs standpoint. And I'll talk about two CNC machines. This one is a ShopSaber RC4. And I'll also talk about my more user-friendly Makera Carvera desktop CNC machine that I have upstairs right next to my computer and is the sort of thing that pretty much anybody could put in their house or even maybe their apartment. Uh, I know I'm just one person's perspective and this is all very new to me. Thank you for joining. Let's get right into it. First, I want to talk about why a person would do this. I want to make parts for my puzzle box that are wooden like this and have a really pretty finish quality in my opinion versus parts that are all 3D printed. They feel kind of cheap compared to something like this, which feels obviously like a solid piece of wood. A lot of puzzle boxes these days are wooden, and so I want to make wooden parts as much as possible for my puzzle boxes. Let's start with the pros and cons of both manufacturing techniques. First consideration, getting the 3D models to start with. So for CNC, you have make your own model or buy models online are the two primary ways. This is good, but the bigger pro is for 3D printing. For those of you who don't know, you can make your own models, you can buy online models, and there's a huge number of databases like Thingiverse, Printables, Things 3D, where you can go download free models and print them yourself. So huge pro for both categories, even bigger for 3D printing manufacturing setup, so setting up a thing to be manufactured in 3D printing. Uh, light green, this is a pro. You have to know what your printer is, you have to get your bed leveled, and you have to know your nozzle size, and pretty much slicing is gonna take care of the rest. For CNC machining, the equivalent knowledge to set up the manufacturing is knowing your workplace holding. These are clamps or vacuums or tape that are gonna hold the part down on the CNC workplace. This takes into account the CNC shape. So if I'm cutting wood that's thinner versus wood that's thicker, I need to know that, measure the wood, enter that into my CNC machine so that it knows the right height to, to cut at. Same is true for X and Y alignment. Wherever I align my part on my CNC machine, I need to make sure my CNC machine knows where the X and Y zero is. And that's relevant to how I modeled it in my design. It's pretty complicated, but once you get a rhythm on the machine that you use, you're gonna find out that it's not so bad. But it is an additional consideration, and it does have a learning curve because that's something you do before you print. You always have to find the new X and Y orientation based on where your material has been mounted to your table. So that is a con for the CNC category. Next we have model to machine. So this is what it takes to get your model software ready for your machine to run. Slicing is how this is done on 3D printing. I gave this a paint, which is a slight con because there is a learning curve to learning how to slice. It's a lot easier these days. You're gonna drag your models into your program, decide how thick your layer heights are gonna be, figure out whether you're using PLA, PETG, TPU, or some other kind of filament, make sure that the temperatures and the speeds and the accelerations are correct. If it needs supports, you'll add supports. I think this takes me about two minutes every time I run a new model to slice. Um, it probably takes a few weeks to learn if you have an engineering mindset. This is much, much, much more difficult for CNC machining. So the equivalent of slicing is cam profiling. And when you do a CAM profile, this is designing the tool path that each tool is going to take, how fast it's going to move, how quickly the tool is going to rotate. Um, there's a lot that goes into this, so I'm just going to read the list. You've got to know how your parts are being laid out, where the tabs are going to be to keep your part from breaking loose from your wood and then flying across the room. You have to know what tools or end mills you're using the speeds and feeds for those, which are calculated based on the chip size and heat considerations, if you're milling uh, metal especially. You have to learn the tool paths. So there's different tool paths to follow a line, go around a line, cut out a space in a, in a hole, in a, there's different shapes the tool can do. Um, 
I was shocked to learn how many different tool paths existed. I used probably 15 different paths for every part that I cut. And uh, getting those tuned in to the right bit, to the right speed, so it doesn't make a lot of noise, so it doesn't make a lot of heat, so it leaves a nice finish, is an artwork. For a new part that I run, this takes me about two hours. If I have a layout of parts, this can take me a whole day to do the cam profiling. Um, and it takes years to learn. I'm two years into this. This is where most of the effort has gone. And I'm still learning about how this goes. So that's where a lot of the work is. And you can do a lot of that in practice mode, especially with the free version of Fusion 360. There's a lot of tools to play around with and see what exists. Post-processing. Big green category, big pro for 3D printing. Most of us can 3D print something, take it right off the print bed, and it's ready to go. Uh, especially with these higher quality, lower layer line prints, a lot of the times you can just sell a part or an item or use a piece you've made right off the printer with no post-processing. For CNC machining, there are some cases, if people have vacuum tables, where there's going to be limited post-processing. But in most cases, especially for what I'm doing, the parts are held in by tabs. The tabs have to be cut. And then if you're making parts out of wood or plastic, you usually have to be sanded or have a little post-processing done before they're ready for sale. So a small con in that category for the CNC machine. Environmental considerations. 3D printer, this is a, a pretty good pro. There's a little bit of off-gassing, but mostly this can be run in any office room or basement in any house without temperature, sound, or, or um, dangerous considerations. The environmental considerations for a CNC machine are going to require dust extraction. That's this big unit behind me. Even the little CNC machine upstairs, I run an external Festool dust extractor. Which is just going to take up more space, create more noise, all the while while it's running. This one also requires an air supply, and I'll do a full overview of the auxiliary systems after this. Um, and then there's noise. This makes a lot of noise. The little one upstairs makes a lot of noise. You could probably run it in an apartment if you were extremely friendly with your neighbors, maybe didn't have a lot of shared walls. As soon as you're milling metal or any um, even like copper, the machines are probably gonna be too loud just at the bit to run in an apartment. You're gonna need a house. I run mine in my garage. I'm in a suburban neighborhood and my neighbors uh, haven't complained. Room needs. So for a CNC machine, uh, this is another light con. You need a dedicated room, a dedicated desk, or a garage space. You need materials, so you're going to need room to store big pieces of wood because parts are cut out of things like this instead of smaller rolls. And in most cases, you're going to need, you know, the power and the room for the auxiliary systems. The room needs for a 3D printer. You just need a computer that's probably shared, something you can create a USB flash drive off of. You need a little desk space or a little floor space and a window to vent. So if you're printing, especially in um, nylon or ABS or ABA plastic, you should have a window open for ventilation and you shouldn't be hanging out in that room while it's printing because of the off-gassing. Parts per time. So parts per time and final part materials are the two categories where CNC not only takes the cake, but it takes the cake by so much that it is why you run these machines. So part per time, if you're 3D printing something small like these, like a little, these are just like little wooden rings. If I was to 3D print these, there we go, they'd take 10 minutes each maybe. I can see and see these in about half that time. And these are a pretty small part. As soon as you go to something bigger, like this donut, holder. This would take an hour or two to 3D print and it takes about six minutes to CNC uh, each part. So maybe 12 minutes total. Once you're doing something bigger like a cutting board or a door, these machines will still cut out parts like that in five or ten minutes. You know if you do a whole door uh, or a little door on this four foot by four foot machine in 10 minutes, 15 minutes at, at most, even with planing. So CNC machines, much, much faster. Um, it's close with small parts speed-wise, but as soon as the parts get a little bigger, you're going from five minutes on a CNC machine to two hours on a 3D printer. So it quickly catches up there. They can also cut things like this. So this is a plastic tube, and then I cut these little grooves on it to snap some parts into for my puzzle box. 
A 3D printer could never really create this part. And a CNC machine, once you have the tube made, can cut all these holes in about a minute. And that's uh, super fast when it comes to mass production compared to running a 3D printer. And then when we talk about final part materials, 3D printers have known filaments. They're all plastic at the end of the day. And CNC machines can use any material under the sun. I really like cutting with woods. You can cut HDPE, uh, high density polyethylene plastic, which is like what a cutting board is made out of. That allows you to make similar plastic parts, only it's not gonna melt in your car, warp over time, and you can throw in the dishwasher to clean, which is pretty cool. Uh, CNC machines can also cut carbon fiber panels, carbon fiber parts, and then aluminum, copper, PCB boards, and a whole variety of, of things. So when it comes to materials, CNC's take the cake. Maintenance. Pro for 3D printing, most 3D printers these days require very little maintenance. Um, if you're manufacturing, you might be changing nozzles, you might be respraying your beds every now and then, especially if you don't have an enclosure. CNC machines do require quite a bit of upkeep. This one specifically is going to require some cleanings of all the rails. It requires grease every 60 hours of runtime. But besides that, this is made to run for 30 years, 24 hours a day with very little downtime. This machine will be around five or 10 years from now. I doubt I'll have any of the 3D printers I have today in five or 10 years. So. This is a little bit more robust. It will stand the test of time. It holds its value a lot better than a 3D printer. Um, obviously a little tough to compare, but I would say both have a manageable amount of service required. 3D printers are just gonna be easier. Um, you don't need to be a, a mechanic to be able to maintain a CNC machine like this. But when it comes to all the auxiliary systems that you're gonna have to learn how to use, uh, you are gonna need to certainly be somebody who knows how to run tools. Finally, costs. This is maybe the biggest con for CNC's and the biggest pro for 3D printers, especially these days. You can get a decent 3D printer for 200 bucks, 300 bucks. Uh, if you wanna go up to a level where you don't have to worry about the 3D prints and they all just come out perfect, you're gonna be spending $1,000, maybe a little less. I like my Bamboo P1S. I think it's about $850 once you add the color changing tray to it and it's a great 3D printer and it never gives me any issues. This CNC machine is about $30,000 all in. The CNC machine I have upstairs is about $5,700 all in these days. Uh, back when it released on Kickstarter, it was about $4,000. So obviously in the short term, 3D printers are a lot cheaper. I will say there's a range of CNC machines that start at $300, $400. There's a Sang Smart one on Amazon that's maybe $600 that a lot of people really like. And then there's hobbyist machines. The reason that I'm sticking with the two that I'm talking about is they have automatic tool changers. They're both connected to vacuum systems and I think both are gonna run for a very long time. I think a lot of those hobby machines, you're always gonna struggle a little bit with the tolerances. You're always gonna have limitations from the, the size, the speed of the motor, the volume, and then you need space for a CNC machine. You need power, you need a vacuum system. And by the time you set all that up, you probably wish you had a higher quality machine in the middle because your time is gonna cost more than the machine in the long run. So having a machine that requires less time and rework and finagling, to me, is a better bet. That's why I'm going for the $1,000 3D printers instead of the $200 3D printers. That's why I went for the $6,000 CNC machine to start instead of the $600 CNC machine to start. Alternate manufacturing methods. You know, if you're like me and you make little puzzle boxes or trinkets or you've got an Etsy store, laser cutting and laser engraving is super powerful. It has the ability to cut out small wooden parts as well as leave beautiful artwork finishes, cut, grooved, burnt on top. I even see laser machines cutting rock in a really pretty three-dimensional way. There's also lathing, which is a turning type of CNC. It's different from the fourth axis I have upstairs. It rotates the part extremely quickly, which allows you to chip away things, leaving um, you know, cylindrical type shapes at the end. The last manufacturing technique, 
which often I think is going overlooked, especially these days, is traditional woodworking tools. You know, a sander, a cutting saw, a band saw, a drop saw, your table saws. These are pretty simple things. If you make a couple custom jigs, you can run your whole part run without needing CNC machines. You know, these are really good for specific things, but if you want to make cutting boards, if you want to make little trays or coasters, you can do it with hand tools and still have equally as high a quality of part at the end. So don't, don't think you need a machine like this to start producing, you know, small wooden parts on your own. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Leave your questions in the comments. Uh, Makara Carvera is doing a video soon comparing CNC machining to 3D printing, which I can't wait to watch. Check out Shop Savers stuff online as well. They've got some great tutorials and YouTube videos showing the success of their machines in the real world. And uh, th thank you for watching. If you're interested in learning more about my puzzle boxes, check out leisureloop.com. If you like this video, hit like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.